In 2006, Atlas Core was founded to address critical social issues by developing leaders, strengthening organizations, and promoting innovations through an overseas fellowship and virtual learning programs of skilled professionals from around the world. Our community began with an inaugural class of six fellows who hailed from Colombia and India. In 15 years, Atlas Core has empowered 1,100 leaders from 110 countries, partnered with 400 host organizations, U.S. embassies, and our network of supporters to multiply impact domestically and worldwide. Atlas Core leaders represent the richness of diversity, inclusion, and cultural awareness. Now, more than ever, we need to keep building bridges between social change leaders from around the world. During our 15th anniversary year, Atlas Core continues to engage social change leaders as fellows and virtual scholars. Our fellows serve in the United States and virtually from their home regions. Virtual scholars enhance their professional skills, build global networks, and prepare for leadership in home communities during our Virtual Leadership Institute, a new online leadership development program launched by Atlas Core in 2020. This year, we invite you to celebrate with us our 15th anniversary. Thank you for supporting our community of global change makers. Thank you for supporting Fourteen. Atlas Core. Hello, thank you for joining us today. My name is Zachary Morris, and I'm the Senior Manager of Global Engagement here at Atlas Core. Um, this is our last information session of this recruitment cycle. And today I'm excited to share tips for putting together a great application. This recruitment cycle, we are looking for candidates for three different initiatives within the Atlas Core Fellowship, the Environmental and Climate Change Initiative, Operations and Human Resources, and Southeast and East Asia. You may also view our previous webinars on our website, events.atlascore.org, or in the Atlas Core YouTube channel where you currently are watching this information session. So uh, before I get started on sharing advice for your application, I wanted to talk a little bit about Atlas Core. Um, Atlas Core engages leaders committed to social change in professional fellowships at organizations to learn best practices, build organizational capacity, and return home to create a network of global change makers. Fellows serve full-time at host organizations in the United States, addressing issues that complement their expertise. They increase their leadership skills through hands-on experience while developing invaluable connections to learn effective practices. Our last session was all about the fellowship experience. And I really encourage you to go back and watch that webinar where you can hear directly from the fellows on their experience throughout their time in the US during the fellowship. Now the fellowship is open to people worldwide who are not US citizens or residents, have at least a bachelor's degree and two years of experience and are 35 years old or younger at the start of the fellowship. Fellows must also be committed to living on a basic stipend and to returning to their home country or region at the end of the program. As stated before, Atlas Core is currently recruiting global professionals for three different initiatives within the Atlas Core Fellowship for opportunities beginning in late 2022 and 2023. And those initiatives are the environment and climate change, operations and human resources, and Southeast and East Asia. If you don't fit within one of these categories, you may still find this information session very helpful and decide to apply, but please note that your application may not be reviewed until October 2022 or later, as we are prioritizing applicants within these three initiatives who are eligible. Again, this information session will focus on important tips and advice on the application process and putting together a great application. It is useful for everyone, even those who don't fit within those previously mentioned categories. The first part will be focused on general tips for putting together a good application, followed by tips on our three initiatives, and then finally a question and answer session where you can ask whatever question you'd like. Um, feel free to put your questions in the comments um, as I am speaking and I will answer them at the end. 
Amazing. I am going to go ahead and share our presentation now. Um, so as you can see, our model is here um, that you may have seen in the video. And, and the idea is that we are <clears throat> developing leaders and strengthening organizations through leading and through training and through service with the idea to create social impact at the end and creating this global network of social leaders um, who are promoting positive social change throughout the world. Atlas Core currently has over 100, uh, 1,200 leaders in our network from over 112 countries. And um, some of our founding principles are that talent is universally distributed, but opportunity is not. International barriers prevent global service leadership, especially South to North. And the most effective way to address social issues is by developing leaders. And this is what guides us through our fellowship program and the other programs that we have here at Atlas Core. Okay, I'm gonna start off with some general application tips for you. Um, so one of the biggest suggestions that I have is to just follow the instructions. The biggest way to get your application disqualified is by not reading the instructions carefully. For example, don't use first person pronouns in your biography when you're explicitly asked not to. Um, and don't include other information in the bio that we say not to use. Um, so your bio, for example, should be in third person. It should be, you know, if I'm referring to myself, Zachary Morris is a senior manager of global engagement and he got a degree in this um, from this university. And he is a international development professional. It should not have I, the pronouns I or my's or me. Um, so keep that third person. But overall, before you finish each section, really review those instructions that you're given and ensure that your responses align with that. My second tip is context and plain language. So avoid the use of jargon and assume that the application reviewer does not know anything about your professional background, industry, or why the work you do is important. Include relevant background details and historical information to help the reader understand your background. And don't use acronyms without first spelling out the full meaning. When explaining your tech expertise, do it in a way that anyone can generally understand. You know. Try to explain things as you're explaining to any you know, nonprofit professional who doesn't necessarily specialize in what you do. That is what's most helpful as we're going through your application. Now, my third tip here is on details and results. So we really want you to avoid vague responses that lack clarity. Instead, you should provide detailed and concrete examples that demonstrate the results you have achieved in your professional career. We want to know about your individual contributions to the goals and objectives of a team or organization. I know that, you know, in many, in many environments, you know, you really think about the team as having achieved something or, or a, it's a group that has achieved a goal. But really in this application, um, especially when you're applying to US-based or host organizations, you want to focus on you and your individual accomplishments and contributions. So something I see a lot in the applications is that an applicant will talk about a project that they've implemented, um, but it's very general and, it, and it, it's, you know, this project has achieved this goal. We want to know what are your, what is your role within that project? What did you do specifically to be able to help the team, help the organization achieve that? That's really what we're looking for here. So when appropriate, use statistics and numbers to support these claims um, and details and examples when you're describing your skills and interests. If you say you manage volunteers, how many volunteers did you manage? If you work in fundraising, how much money have you raised or how many successful grant applications have you worked on? If you ran social media at your organization, how many new followers did Facebook gain? The Facebook page of your organization gain. Vague responses in both the interview and application process will result in a lower score and possible disqualification, even if you have a great background and are a good fit for the fellowship. 
So we're going to go through a couple examples in a little bit, but really think about how can I be as detailed and specific as possible in my application. So my other tip here is consistency. Highlight professional expertise, including social issue areas and skill sets throughout your entire application, such as a biography, essay, social issue area, and skill sections. Your application really should tell a consistent story about your professional experience and what you're passionate about. Ask yourself if there's a clear connection between your work and your goals in the fellowship. If you've changed fields or career paths, ensure that your application clearly communicate this clearly communicates this change. Consistency is really important throughout the application process, including when you're a semifinalist and your resume is being sent to a host organization. It can be really, really confusing if you put that you're a monitoring and evaluation expert passionate about food security in your bio biography section, but then the rest of your application doesn't really speak to that. It speaks to, you know, your passion in um, the health sector or in women's empowerment. So that's what we mean by being consistent. You know, if you put in your bio that you're an M&E expert and you're passionate about food security, we sort of want to see that throughout your application. Now, we know that you may have more than one social issue. And in fact, you can choose up to three in your, your social issue application. But really think about what your main social issue is, what is your main skill, and try to focus on that throughout your, your application. If you could do more than one skill, uh, you know, if you really feel that, oh, you're an ME expert and you're great at project program management, that's fine but make sure you have both of those skills and social issues presented throughout your application. And we'll talk more about that as we focus on the bio section and the social issue area section and the skill section. So finally, my next tip is keywords and statistics. Atlas Core often searches for applications based on keywords and typically reviews information that is listed on your application first and foremost so it's important that all of your updates in your resume are also made in your application. Um, that's even if you want to update your application later. Um, so you will initially submit something to us and we'll review it and you'll be put in our semifinalist pool, but you can continue updating your application, especially as you keep growing your experience. So your employment history section should list all of your relevant professional experience. And again, you want to think of consistency in those keywords and statistics. So what story are you telling? What skill and social issue are you passionate about? How does that come out in your employment history section, for example? And um, your using statistics and keywords in your response will ensure that your application is matched with appropriate roles. So when we are sending, when we're searching for um, different candidates who could fit some of our potential roles, you know, we are searching by some of those keywords. Um, so in your skills section, you should write out technical terms, describing your expertise and the proper names of software that you're proficient in. You know, the more you add about specificity around the skills that you're good at within, for example, operations or human resources, let's say you're great at knowledge management, we want that detail in your application, in your bio especially, and in your skills section. Um, and again, any software you're good at, put it in your application. We want to know that. Um, so those are some of our general application tips that we have for you. I'm going to go ahead and move to our biography section and tips there. So first impressions are crucial in the American workplace. In fact, job candidates are routinely disqualified if their resumes, cover letters, and other application materials contain a single spelling mistake or punctuation error. Your biography is your first impression to your host organization and future colleagues and a reflection of your experiences and accomplishments. We want you to present yourself in the best possible light, so please take great care to check for spelling, punctuation, and grammar mistakes in your biography. Now, we do understand that English is not your first language, um, so we are more forgiving uh, than ruling you out because of a single spelling or grammar mistake. But again, you know, grammar and spelling is an important factor to consider in your application. And you want to make sure that you check it over, you, you know, 
um, maybe send it to a friend for feedback and um, or use this uh, plat this software called Grammarly. Those are great ways to check your spelling and grammar um, to make sure that you're on track to putting together a good application. And again, you know, make sure you're really reading over your, your biography. Um, that is the first most important thing that we look at. It's an opportunity to sell yourself in 300 words or less and let the host organization know what you're an expert in and what you're passionate about. Now, you don't need to list every position you've had, and you should only write about the positions most relevant to the skill sets that you refer to in the skills section of your Atlas court application. So again, we're talking about consistency. If you fit the profile of the three initiatives that we are currently recruiting for, demonstrate that in your application and especially your bio. Look at the special initiative web pages and share your application around, um, shape your application around what we're looking for. So I'm gonna go ahead and move to a sample bio and I want to show you a couple um, great aspects of it. So let me go ahead and share my screen. Okay. And I'm going to zoom in so everyone can see. If I can figure that out. Okay. So, um, Give me one moment here. Not seeing that, but hopefully everyone, oh, there we go. Um, so here is an example of an Atlas Core biography um, that we also have um, on our uh, bio template. Uh, we provide a template to you to help assist you as you're writing your application. Um, and I've just went ahead and I've highlighted um, really important parts of it. Um, so this is an example of a public health advocate and a communications professional. So right away within the first sentence, you know, okay, she's, Fran is going to talk about her experience in the public health sector, potentially, and the communication sector, and that she has that type of experience. Um, she's... Right here, she states the number of years of experience she has. And then specifically, communications and digital marketing can be a big field. So she's stating that public relations and digital and social media marketing in the nonprofit sector is her sweet spot. That's what she's great at. Now she highlights her degree in development communication. That provides further evidence to us that, okay, she's a communication professional. Not only does she have years of experience, but she also has a master's in development communication. Um, so that further bolsters her claim. And over the past three years, she's advocated for reproductive health rights. Um, don't, don't worry if your degree doesn't quite match what your uh, professional experience is. It doesn't always happen that way, that what you get a degree in um, is what you end up doing. But if you do, definitely communicate that. What I see often in bios is um, a lot of information of when you're born, where you're born, the high school you went to. Please don't include any of that in your, your application, as well as information about your family. Don't say that you're a mother um, or a father or a sibling. Keep it professional. We want to know about your professional experience, not about your personal life in the bio. So that's something really um, important to keep in mind. Um, so she talks a little bit about how she has public relations experience advocating for reproductive health rights. Um, she has also implemented a mass email marketing campaign. So talking about, you know, bolstering the fact that she has digital and social media marketing experience and that she even includes some stats um, of how her health-focused messaging has helped um, in several communities by, by spreading awareness. Here, she includes information about the number of social media followers on Facebook and Instagram and how she's increased that, um, and that she's published you know, 
monthly newsletters with an open rate consistently above 50 percent so her her newsletters she not only published the newsletters but they're very high um open rate they're very they must be very engaging because a lot of people are looking at that now i'd be impressed by anyone who could have a 50 percent open rate I, I seriously doubt the emails i sent have that high of an open rate <laughs> um and finally you know she again talks about how she wants to achieve social impact by reducing health disparities in vulnerable communities and empowering young social leaders. Um, so you can see that there are many different factors that she has in her um, biography. And again, this is um, not a real person. This is just a sample we are um, that we sort of made up. And uh, so, yeah, that is very, very important things to keep in mind. So again, you don't need to list every position you've had. And really, you should only write about the positions that are most relevant to your skill sets and social issues that you refer to throughout the rest of your application. So please keep that in mind. Um, and let me go ahead and go to some more tips here. Okay. One moment. There we go. Um, so use the template. So it's there to ensure your application is successful and you have the correct format and structure. See the bio template as an example. So if you look there, there's a link that you can go to and that's where you can pull up the guidance that I sort of just showed you. Um, and it has that format here. It has um, exactly that format is how you should start your bio. If your bio doesn't meet a certain level of quality, then unfortunately we will not review the rest of your application. And I also wanted to, um, oh, I see a question here about please provide details of your written, spoken, and written fluency in terms of professional and academic use. Again, I think that refers to um, a question in the application. And what that means is just, talking about your experience writing English um, in the English language. So um, I'm going to go to one of the um, one of our current initiative pages and I'll explain to you how that sort of how, how you can demonstrate in your bio your um, how you fit within this initiative. So here is our operations page for operations and human resources professionals. We have different areas within operations and human resources. You want to focus on in your bio, let's say you are an amazing knowledge management professional. Again, you want to make sure that here's what we're looking for. Here's an example of what you could be doing. You want to make sure you closely review this web page and your, you know, any experience you have that's relevant to this, you're mentioning in your application and especially in your bio section. And again, here is what we're looking for in knowledge management and these different specific areas. You wanna make sure you're communicating that in your bio. Okay, I am moving on to the skills section. So again, we've already mentioned a lot of the skill section and this is the section in your application where you can choose up to three skills that you're great at. So the skills section is crucial for us to understand an applicant's abilities to make the most successful host matches. The most successful candidates demonstrate their expertise in specific skill areas throughout the entire application, including the resume, biography, employment history, and short essay section. If your application does not demonstrate at least two years of experience in one skill area, then it is much less likely that your application will be successful. So really, when you're thinking of what is your skill one, the minimum requirement and minimum thing is that you have two years of experience in that skill set. So if you have, let's say you have a year of experience in another skill set, you should put that as skill number three, if at all. You don't have to choose three skill sets. And again, perhaps you only want to focus on one or two. Um, keep in mind the following when you're filling out the skill section. Um, again, as I said, you can choose up to three skills that best represent your, your professional 
experience, and the first skill you list should be your primary skill set and what you have the most education and experience. Think, what do my past role titles experience communicate? What do my past, what are my, what are the responsibilities of my past jobs? What does that communicate? And then skills two and three in your application are really complementary. We want not only to see what your responsibilities were, but also what you've accomplished with any specific skill set. So that's really, really important and something I've already talked about before. We don't want to just know what you were responsible for. That's easy. Anyone can copy their position description. And in fact, they see this and then paste it into the application. Yes, that can be good in some places, maybe in the employment history. But really, like your resume, you should be talking about what you individually accomplished in your job. Um, we want results and outcomes and not just what you what you did. Um, that communicates your accomplishments. So, again, as I said before, how many volunteers did you manage? Um, if you want to work in fundraising, how much money have you raised? How many grant applications have you worked on? Um, you know, it's really easy online to find some tips for, for putting together, you know, a good resume, which I suggest for any opportunity and sort of following that same advice for putting for your application. Um, for your skills section, you want to make sure it matches up with your employment history somewhat um, and your short essay answers. Um, and together with those pieces, we should have a good idea around your skill set and your professional development goals and how you want to grow that skill set. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and move to an example here. So here is a strong example of a marketing and communications person. Um, and now why is this a good example? Well, it provides good details about the kinds of campaigns they are running, what the outcomes were. It has a great use of numbers. It gives an all-around idea of how they would contribute to a host organization with the skill set. This is sort of something that our partnership team wants to see when they're looking at an application. They know exactly how they would be able to contribute to an organization they're working with. So this is how you can um, put together a strong example. Now, the only critique that I would add to this is by adding a little bit of detail about the type of freelance content that was produced. That is maybe additional detail that, that could benefit in this example. Now I'm gonna go ahead and move to another example. This is an example of a skill section that needs improvement. As you can see, it's very, very detailed um, as opposed to the, it, it's a lot less detailed as opposed to the previous example. Um, it, doesn't really, it's lacking in detail and often uses soft skills of using communication versus professional roles. It doesn't give me a deep idea of what their skill roles or responsibilities were and it lacks outcomes. Okay, so yes, you're saying you're, a, you're adept at using blog and social media platforms um, and you're even talking about you're doing it to, it to communicate, to support food security but you're not really telling me anything. You're not really convincing me that you actually have that experience. So I would think twice before moving your application on. Um, and again, this is just a fun, playful example. Um, okay, you're putting that your communications assistant in Atlas Core, that's good. You're putting a previous role and you're, you're putting your responsibility, but again, you're not putting what your outcome is. You're just putting something that I could have copied and pasted from the job description. That is not what we're looking for. We're looking for a lot more detail than, than this throughout your application. So please keep that in mind. Finally, your social issue and application tips. So um, something we are all about social impact here at Atlas Core. We're all about developing leaders, not only to give you an opportunity, um, and, and to go along with their principles that, um, you know, talent is, uh, universal is not universally distributed. Um, it is universally distributed, but opportunity is not, uh, it's not only about giving opportunities, but it's about why, um, giving opportunities so that you may return 
after your fellowship to your home country and region to promote social impact or social change. That is a big focus of our fellowship and what we're looking for you to gain out of the program. So in your essay, in your social issue area section, we want to see that. We want you to communicate your passion. Um, we want to see how you want to develop yourself as a leader professionally, strengthen organizations, and create that social impact. So if you're passionate about food security or if you're passionate about health, communicate that to us. What is your vision for achieving food security in your country? What is your um, vision for achieving women's empowerment? That's what we want to see in your application, as well as having the right professional background and being able to explain your professional background. Um, yeah, so, so again, what you're inspired to address and why it's important to you. Connect your passion to the impact you've achieved so far in the social issue area and your intended future impact. Um, and again, use that in your biography, social issue area section, and short essay response to communicate this. Don't write about your experience in one social issue in your biography, but then go over a completely different one in another section. Okay, so finally, I have some um, specific tips for each of the different areas here. Um, so we have climate change and the environment. If you are the right fit um, in the application, you want to mark social issue area one on your application as energy and environmental issues. Um, other related social issues such as food security and wildlife and animal welfare should be marked on your application as a secondary area of expertise. So again, this has to do with following the instructions. You know, we are looking for those who have their primary social issue area in, in energy and environmental issues, and we expect them to mark social issue area one. Um, and generally within the climate change environmental initiative, we seek to expand the number of fellows placed in full-time roles with mission-driven organizations working on initiatives to protect the planet, combat the threat of climate change, and or promote clean energy and sustainable ecosystems. Um, and within that general pot, we're looking for candidates with at least two years of professional experience in in one of these categories, sustainability or environment and social governance, environmental protection and biodiversity con conservation and clean and sustainable energy. So those are sort of what we're looking for within the climate change and environment. Um, and again, re you really just want to, to, to put, we're also looking for project and program management, policy and advocacy and partnerships are bu uh, building and business development experience. Um, I am seeing a lot of resumes in our inbox that are, you know, scientists who want to do research in climate change in the environment. Um, and that's great, but really we're looking, you know, have you managed a program? Have you advocated for environmental policy? Have you formed partnerships around this theme? That's what we're looking for within this initiative. And that's what we want to see reflected in your application. I'm going to go ahead and move on to operations and human resources here. Um, so here are some brief tips here. You want to mark operations and human resources as skill one on your application. You want to elaborate on your area of expertise, whether that be talent management, human resources, strategic planning, or knowledge management, operations or supply chains and logistics. And you want to, um, again, look at the website and align your application with what we're looking for. Um, so that is what you should keep in mind for operations human resources. And then finally, Southeast and East Asia. I'm going to go to that screen. You, If you're the right fit, you want to mark skill one on your application within that initiative. You know, these are the top skills we're looking for. Communications and digital marketing, partnerships building, and business development, monitoring evaluation, so on, as you can see on the screen. Um, and keep in mind to be eligible for this initiative, we list specific countries that are eligible on that web page. Now, if you go to apply.atlascore.org, you will see all the current initiatives that we're recruiting for. And keep in mind to pay attention to these tips and these the instructions on those web, web pages about the initiatives. So that was um, all of the tips that I wanted to initially share with you right now. 
Um, however, now I wanted to go into our question and answer section. And I wanted to answer any tips that you had. So I'm gonna go ahead and look at the chat to see any of the, the tips here. So I see one question, does the use of third person apply to any of the other essays? And the answer is no. Really our biography section is the only area in which we are looking for you to use the third person. Naturally, in maybe in the employment history section, you'd probably want to use a third person, but I don't think we have explicit instructions to do that. The bio is really a focus. Really, the other sections can be in the first person, as you've seen in the examples that I've demonstrated. In the skills section, um, how do you upload documents that were prepared for the current organization we are working with? So it really depends on the skill. Only certain skill sets will ask you to upload work samples. I can't remember which do and which don't. So some of them don't. And if they don't, you don't have to upload work, work samples. All right, let's see what other questions we have here. What happens if you have little experience in selected fellowship programs, but your skills are transferable? Again, it um, we are looking for these are the three initiatives we're focusing on because they're underrepresented within our pool. Um, if, if you really don't have the experience that we're looking for, for those initiatives, then it would be really hard to try and apply that experience to that initiative. Even if your skills are transferable, what's on the website is really what we're going to be gauging for these initiatives. Again, we still welcome you to apply. If you don't fit in with one of these initiatives, we're going to launch a fall campaign and um, we will still be reviewing your applications. But if you really don't fit within, for example, the Climate Change and Environmental Fellowship, if you have no experience in the climate change or environment, then you really don't fit within that initiative, unfortunately. Let me see. Feel free to put any other questions that you have here. I see another question from Kenneth. Um, do we strict, do we have to strictly follow the template for writing the biography or can we use a different flow, but with the same information required for the biography? You don't have to strictly follow the template, but I would advise that you stick closely to it again, you know, the template is there to you so that you put the most important information first, but generally, you know, you want to, the topic sentence should be what you're going to talk about in the rest of your bio. So it can be a different flow, but this is typically what we suggest to be set up for success, not only when you're applying to the fellowship, but afterwards, if you are if you are a semifinalist and um, we're sending it to host organizations, that we should be able to read it really quickly and understand what you're all about. I see someone else, they're considering applying for a fellowship um, in the Southeast and East Asian professionals, do they have to obtain achievement in social development or have experience in NGO to be eligible and likely to succeed? That is a great question. You do not need to have a ton of achievements in social development or experience in NGO um, to be eligible. If you have experience in the private sector or another sector, um, you can still be eligible and be able to succeed. Um, Again, it could be for a startup, it could be for a business. Uh, we are looking for experience, you know, some experience that you've had in, in addressing a social issue in the past. It could even be volunteer experience. Um, and you can write about that. Um, but at the very least, if you don't have any social issue area experience at all, then write why you'd be interested in it, um, how you see social your, your career and social impact in that pathway in the future. Can professionals from Peru apply for the Climate Change and Environmental Fellowship? Yes, um, you certainly can apply if you're from Peru for the Climate Change and Environmental Fellowship. Um, that is open worldwide to, to anyone, except if you're a US citizen. Um, I see someone who, uh, who's a climate change and environmental journalist who has advocated for policy changes through their work. 
and if they're asking if they can apply. You can. Um, you would really want to make the case in your bio and throughout your application of how, how you've advocated for policy and um, changes through your work as a journalist. And is there other policy advocacy work you've done outside of just being a journalist and publishing stories? Um, have you, how, yeah, how have you effectively advocated for that policy? So yes, it just depends how you put it in your application. Um, all right, let's see what else. What part of the fellowship is a fit for policy and practice professionals in education? Um, now that could be, it, it, that generally would fit within policy advocacy, maybe program management. It's hard to say without looking at your full resume. Um, I'm not sure if it would be a fit for one of those initiatives that I'm talking about. So I encourage you to read on your website, on our website and see, you know, does that particular one of those fit within me, within what we're looking for? Okay, multiple industries. That is also a good question. Um, it's fine if you have multiple experience across multiple industries, for example, for the operations human resources area. However, again, you really want to focus on that operations and human resources experience and how you've used that and applied that th throughout these different industries. Um, so I see another question about the Southeast and East Asian Professionals Initiative and they have experience in data analysis. Um, I would say that would fall under monitoring and evaluation. So you'd put monitoring and evaluation as skill one. Um, and yes, are there any other general questions about tips for putting together a great application? I see very specific questions, which are great, but also looking any other general questions about the application process that they'd like um, answers. Any tips for recommenders? Um, so I assume that means who you'd want to get, who you'd want to look for in a recommender. I would say anyone who can speak to your professional experience. It could be a past supervisor um, that, you know, anyone, especially let's say if it's, you know, the Climate Change and Environmental Fellowship, well, who can speak to your experience in that area? So that would be my suggestion there. Um, I see a uh, eligibility question. So age requirements, unfortunately, you do have to be 35 at the time that the fellowship starts. Um, so if you're not, then I encourage you to think of anyone else who would be um, a great fit for this opportunity and tell them about it. Um, sometimes we have opportunities that are available for those that are older than 35. But again, we, you know, Atlas Core, we focus on developing young professionals and, and young leaders. And, and we found through research, too, that those that are 35 and, and under will benefit most from this experience. Because if you have more years of experience, you know, you have 16 years of experience, you're older than 35, the benefits that you tend to gain from being part of this program tend to diminish. But we may, we have another program, Virtual Leadership Institute, and sometimes we increase the age requirement for that. Um, any tips for the interview? We're currently redoing our interview template, which is exciting. And and we will send out tips to candidates before that interview takes place. I'm not ready to share all the tips for the interview at this time. Um, okay, I see another question about the skill section and that it should be consistent with the social issue area section. However, the social issue area section has few options for, for operations in HR. So, it so when you're a, when you're writing about the social issue area, you can write about let's say you have experience in food security. Write about that and what you've done and how how you've done that. So did you do operations of work at a food security organization, for example? That could be a way that you connect it. Those two se those two sections don't necessarily have to connect, but they can. Um, 
Did you, were you a human resources profession, um, professional at a children's rights organization? And is that your social issue that you want to talk about? Um, so yeah, those maybe, and don't necessarily have to connect as much your skill and, and social issue, or you don't have to write as much about your skill in the social issue area section, but, but try to. Um, would you advise us to have more than one skill area or even just one is ideal to meet the requirements of a strong application? Again, I would advise you to put skill areas that you have at least two years of experience in. If you have like two months of experience in a certain skill area, it's probably not worth putting on your application. Um, so again, really think to yourself, <clears throat> Are all of my skills really strong and are they are they expressed throughout my application? That's what you want to think about there. Um, so you, yeah, if that could mean one skill, that could mean two skills and that could even mean three skills. You just want to think at the end, am I expressing the skills throughout my application and in my bio adequately? <clears throat> Okay, I'm going to go um, through a couple more questions. So feel free. Um, we have time for about two or three more questions. I see um, a question from a Myanmar citizen currently working in Taiwan. Um, Yes, you, you are eligible for the fellowship. I would say there are certain countries where it's very, very difficult, if not impossible, to get a visa to come to the U.S. Unfortunately, Myanmar falls within that. It, it's, it's very hard, and, and currently the U.S. is not processing visas for um, citizens from that country. Um, so... That, that, is something to, that is something to keep in mind. Afghanistan is another example. If you're in Af Afghanistan right now, unfortunately, the U.S. does not have an embassy there right now, and it's impossible to get a visa to come to the U.S. Um, so while we are open to different countries from around the world for different fellowships, um, it also depends on whether your country, in your country, in that embassy, whether visas are being processed. That is a factor that we do consider when we're placing fellows in a fellowship. We can't make a fellowship work if we can't get you a visa. All right, this is the last question that I'm going to answer. Um, so can we write about social issues we do outside of work? For instance, you are HR professionally tackle these issues outside of work by volunteering with organizations. You can, I would start with what are the social issues you, you tackle in a professional environment? That is what you should start with first. Um, but you can also write maybe as your third or second or third social issue, what ones you tackle by volunteering outside of organizations. And, um, you know, even if you vol, I know, I do see a lot of resumes where people they don't get paid for the social issues they volunteer with. That's fine too. Um, you want to make the case that you've had a significant role volunteering, and and sort of the nature of how you volunteered is also important. <clears throat> if you volunteered at, let's say, uh, an animal shelter and you took care of the animals. That's not really professional experience within that social issue area. So again, how can you express your volunteer experience in a, in a compelling way? Um, so again, thank you so much for your, your time today. Um, unfortunately, we don't have time for any more questions. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to wrap up here. Um, so you can apply for the fellowship by visiting apply.atlascore.org. It's a multi-step process. And the first step is to fill out an application. The application requires a copy of your undergraduate transcript or diplomas and two references. We also encourage you to attach a resume or CV. And you may be asked to submit samples of your work to provide evidence of your professional skills. If your application passes a review, you'll be invited to a Skype interview and then finally, you will be considered a semi-finalist and eligible for a potential placement at a host organization. 
The entire process is on our website at applied.alicecore.org. Our priority application deadline to be considered for the initiatives that I mentioned earlier is May 31st. Um, of, that's coming up in about two weeks. Um, and again, we encourage you to check out the initiatives of the, the websites um, that I mentioned. When you go to apply.alicecore.org, you'll see the different initiatives that we mentioned. Um, it may take several months, maybe longer, to get through the competitive application process. And um, you can also review previous webinars at events.atlascore.org. And I'll put that in the chat here. Um, this is where you can view um, two webinars. One goes into detail about our initiatives of operations and human resources in the environment and climate. And... Um, Southeast and East Asia. And the other talks about the fellowship experience where you can hear directly from fellows within these focus areas and hear how they enjoyed the fellowship. And um, you can always email us at apply at atlascore.org if your question wasn't answered today. And you can go to our um, FAQ section of our website, um, which gives you a lot of information about the fellowship. Um, and then this will be available also at events.alicecore.org. Or as soon as this ends, you'll be able to play back and see the rest of the broadcast. So again, thank you so much for um, attending this webinar today. It was a pleasure to have you. And um, take care. Thank you so much.